Try it again. Welcome to Weekend in Review. I'm Rachel. I am Todd. And you're at that 1870 homestead. Another odd Weekend in Review for us. It's daylight while we're doing our wrap up of the weekend. Yes. So much so I had to take my glasses off because we're sitting in front of the doors that open up outside. It's so bright that I had trees in my <laughs> in my lenses. So we got a bunch of well, not a bunch of snow. We got a nice dusting of snow today, so it's extra bright outside. Yeah, but I'm gonna try to wrap up in time to finish this weekend up and have some relaxation time this evening. I think I've been pushing this guy too hard, so. We had some words today. He's going to get some break. Friday, we I got home from work and you cooked up some nice dinner for us. Yeah. I had leftover Saturday and Sunday. You did. It was it very good. Just uh, threw in some chicken thighs, honey. Garlic. Garlic. Um, soy sauce. Ketchup. Ketchup. And that was it. Instapot. Instapot it for 20 minutes. And it like broke right up and served it over rice with some peas. Very good. Almost all out of our peas from the summer. So ooh, bring on gardening season. We need more peas. Mm -hmm. And the um, curtains you ordered for the kitchen. They came Friday. Those came Friday. Did those curtain rods come with it? No, I've had those curtain rods since we moved in. They've been behind the couch in the ah. living room. So those curtain rods, but they were needed to be cut down for the purposes. Because to buy like those small little curtain rods for decorative curtains cost a fortune for some reason for half the curtain rod. <laughs> so I just bought regular size ones and had Todd trim them for me. Got those hung up and they look fabulous. Yes. Especially the ones on that side. Yeah, I'm not sure if, how much footage we got in here of it, but it's hard to tell, but they're like a linen on cream buffalo check. They kind of just look like a solid color in a lot of the pictures. I'm happy with them. Me too. Welcome to Saturday. <laughs> See you in a little while. All right, he's gotta go to work. It's just me here this morning. Todd's got another one of those power outages at work. Um, no breakfast yet, so I'm gonna just get going on my coffee. People see this little doohickey a lot in my Instagram posts and always wonder what it is. It's really nothing special. It's just um, a little funnel that coffee sits in. I think it's called a pour over or slow pour coffee. I'm not a fancy coffee person, but I'm gonna make my coffee this morning and anyone know what these things are? They're not easy buttons. They are wallpaper scores. So that's my job today is to score and try to remove Maybe I can get it all done, I don't know. It just depends how easy it comes down, but the wallpaper in the hallway, our stairway needs to come down. So we're gonna get started on our day. Animals have already been fed. I don't think Todd should be gone too long, maybe a couple hours. Yeah, it took all day. <laughs> I mean, I didn't, I was surprised actually I got it all done in one day. But at the end of it, my finger like would not work anymore because you like use your index finger on that scraper, you know, to, mm -hmm. oh, I've like had to take a break at lunch because I'm like, I got to give my finger a break, <laughs> but I got it all done. So that project's just ready for really budget so I can buy the next part of it and get going on hiring it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty tall. It is very tall. We don't have scaffolding. 
No. No. We don't have really tall ladders either. Right. And we don't have people who are not afraid of heights either. No, that's true. (laughs) (laughs) Well, last time we painted something really high like that, I think I got up and did the high, high part. I think maybe, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. My my trip to work didn't last long. I think it was like... A couple hours, huh? round trip an hour and a half or yeah. something um, when i got home she was busy working on her stairway so i went outside and the last time we used our little garden trailer that we pull around behind our four-wheeler i noticed one of the axles was like <laughs> got bent pretty bad so i'm going to see if i can fix it today With the trailer fixed, I put that away, and it was a lot of wood that I had bucked up from that tree that fell, and it needed to be stacked. It was just kind of all in a big pile. Mm -hmm. So I got most of that all stacked, had some energy left, and figured, let's get the saw, let's get the rest of the tree completely cut up, that way it's done. So I got that taken care of, it was really, really rotten. I had thought about 10 minutes into cutting with my saw to go get my Alaskan chainsaw mill and try it. But every piece I cut was like- Had big holes in the center. Big hole right down the Mm -hmm. center. It wouldn't have been worth my time. I have plenty of logs to try that on. Yeah. Had a huge pile stashed way out there. Right. But it was afterwards, I think, when I went out there and looked and that tree was all cleaned up. It's one of those times where you're like, you look at your land after you've been working it and it's really gets to be impressive at a point like how different it was mm-hmm. from the time you walked on your property especially in our situation our property had been abandoned basically and neglected the property itself for 10 years um mm-hmm. and i think we have a clip in here to show you what that little section of woods looked like and you couldn't walk through it and now it's a it's really at a place that I can turn it into what we want. So today I was on Stark Brothers thinking about all the trees and the berry bushes and the perennial herbs and things that I could plant through there to make it a proper food forest, Mm -hmm. which is really exciting. I had to go back to work Saturday evening to undo what I did Saturday morning. I basically had a power outage at work. I have to shut down all my equipment. And then once power was restored, I had to go in and bring everything back online. Good morning. Morning. Welcome to Sunday. Breakfast time. He didn't get to have breakfast yesterday because I had to go to work. Yeah, I told him that. Yeah. Would you have anything good? Yesterday? No. <laughs> I didn't really make breakfast. I think I, I don't know what I had. This morning is Canadian bacon, scrambled eggs with green chilies. And what kind of cheese was that? I don't know. Some kind of Kerrygold, like Dublinger cheese or something like that my favorite cheese to buy in the big blocks. It's a really sharp, sweet cheddar. You're making a sandwich? No, I just want to. And apple butter. And that's it. The eggs cooked up amazing today. As in, as in they didn't stick at all. And I significantly increased the heat this time. Yeah, I read that it's a trick. Cook them high. Um, it was to the point where when I threw some bacon grease in there, it was just about ready to start smoking. So it was really hot. I let the pan heat up really well before I started. Mm-hmm. And we're good. And I found we always keep our eye out for cast iron when we go like antiquing. And I knew we had a small pan. I could, but we never used it. And it was down in that little drawer underneath your stove. And it's a little 
Were you using that at all today or no? Little eight inch Wagner. Um, so I told him we've got to work on seasoning that so we can add it to our regular use. I think we got it really cheap. I don't remember. Like five bucks or 10 bucks because somebody at some point took a wire wheel to it and to try to clean it. But I think we can salvage it. Yeah, it's not it's not like pitted or anything. It mm -hmm. just needs to be completely reseasoned because I'm not sure why they did that. Maybe it was rusty or something. What's on your agenda today? Not sure. I did make a mess in my garage yesterday a little bit. So I have my chainsaw I need to put away. See if I can sharpen the chain up on it a little. When I was cutting up that tree yesterday, I think somewhere in that tree, I think there was a nail or something because halfway through my saw, <laughs> performance decreased by about half for really? some reason and it's a pretty new chain so I must have hit something so I need to look and see if I have the right size file for my chain so that's one thing that I'm really not I know like if you have like a 3 8 chain you have to use a 3 8 file and hmm. so I need to look and see what I have and then I need to get it gas back up and oiled back up so the next time I need it it's ready to go I think I'm going to when we did the kitchen remodel, you guys know I had to empty a whole bunch of those drawers. So I still have some bags of stuff down in the basement that I carried down there, like my Tupperware drawer stuff. So I'm gonna get that put away. And I think it's laundry day for me. Not very exciting. Oh, good bite. <laughs> I'm kind of overcooked Canadian bacon a little. It's almost like real bacon now. So after breakfast, I did go down to the basement and I got our two most important bags pulled up. That was our Tupperware and things like our foil and, um, you know, beast wrap covers and stuff like that. All put back away where they belong, which are our two most used things. The bags that are still down there that I cleaned out from the drawers are the two drunk junk drawers. <laughs> Mm. And I just don't want to reintroduce that stuff. So I have to just go down there and say, what do I need to keep and how can I keep it differently? Like color pencils and stuff like that. Cause that can go in a craft drawer somewhere and other stuff. It's literally junk. Yeah, it's almost a necessity. Some, some people say that if you don't have a junk drawer in your kitchen, then every drawer becomes a junk drawer. Yeah, but okay. So something to keep in mind. Yes, okay. My tree that I worked on yesterday, after I got everything all cut, I, I had a lot of pieces of scrap left and pieces of bark and limbs and branches and a little bit of the stump that kind of stuck up out of the ground. There was a piece over here, a piece over here. I piled all that stuff on top of the stump on Saturday Sunday morning, I knew it was supposed to snow in the afternoon, so I thought to myself, why not pile that up a little bit better, collect more of the sticks from around the yard, and let's just burn it. I don't know if it's gonna actually burn the entire stump down, but we'll get rid of all that junk. We mm -hmm. won't have to haul over to the burn pile. So I did that this morning. Went well. It didn't. Def it definitely didn't burn it down the stump to the ground yet. He would have to do it a couple more mm -hmm. times. No. Well, while Todd was out cleaning up and in the woods, I felt like going out and just looking at my garden. I could tell from the house and just being out last week that that polar, you know, what was it called? The bomb cyclone. That bomb cyclone did a number on my fencing. Midwinter garden check and I'll show you guys the good, the bad, and the ugly because it's definitely looking ugly right now. So yeah. <laughs> see? Can you guys see that? The wind completely blew over my fence. All that. It really happened last week when we had that bomb cyclone. And this is just cheap snow fencing. And we only used a few T posts. The rest were just like tree stakes. So we're gonna have to come back here, through here with the proper T post, this whole side's just about laying down. Let me, yeah, that's not good. 
So for those that weren't with us last fall, um, this is how we've expanded our roof stout beds. I'm actually gonna pull this one all the way out to here to meet that one. So we have that roof stout bed. This is all roof stout. And then it wraps around <clears throat> roof stout beds goes all the way to the end. Oh gosh, I wish you guys could feel what it feels like to walk on this because this is all the original straw we put down two years ago. It was like squishy and then Ruth Stout. So the goats were due for a refresh of their herbal dewormer balls. Um, there'll be a video coming out on that here soon. So I made them, went out and visited them Philia didn't want to have nothing to do with it. Bathsheba was all about it. They're like candy to her. So I'm going to have to treat Philia tomorrow. Get out of your food. Thank you. Our mead, our apple sizer that we made, uh, was it probably three or four weeks ago now. Uh, the bubbles on the airlock pretty much completely subsided at this point. And we decided Let's rack this thing off. We'll get it stored down in the basement. Mm -hmm. We were excited to try a new process too, so. I'm not a fan, I don't think. <laughs> oh. It's like, hurts your teeth. <sighs> yeah, see? I don't know if I taste the alcohol though. I definitely do. <laughs> yeah, if you do that, it's alcohol. These cinnamon sticks aren't. I'm gonna throw a couple cinnamon sticks in one just to see what it does. Doesn't taste very good. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, like, is it like terrible? It's not enjoyable. It's just not enjoyable. It's not awful, it's just there's nothing enjoyable about it. It doesn't even taste like apples. No. So we're gonna put a couple tablespoons of honey in the second ferment. And we threw cinnamon sticks in this one. And you saw using mason tops somewhere. Yeah, Michael Pratt over at the Pratt Family Homestead, he made up some wine using his mason top lids instead of using um, a normal air bubbler, like a uh, airlock to go on the top. So we figured this time we just emptied out these jars when they had spaghetti sauce and stuff in them from when we're cooking tonight. So we sanitized them out. We're gonna, we just racked it off into these jars. We're gonna throw the little mason tops on there and use that to keep out all the unwanted things from getting inside. And still let air out. So these will go end up down in the basement with the first batch of mead that we made and we'll leave it down there for a while and forget Ooh. about it for a few months. Look and at then... that one bubbling. It liked <laughs> being yeah. fed. Yum, 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 honey. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna leave that down in the basement for a few months at least. Yeah. So when I was carrying it downstairs, you know, I had him like wrapped in my arm. So going down the stairs, he told me not to jostle it too much. Well, one of them was going <laughs> like coming out of that mason top, like really strongly. So I just squeezed the nipple to let some of the gas oh, out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was doing a little bit of reading too about uh, sizers by nature have a really, really high alcohol content. Yeah. And once it gets up to the point where the yeast, all the yeast has a tolerance. Like the yeast we were using has like a 14% alcohol tolerance. Mm -hmm. Once it gets up to that point, the yeast is done. It basically kills off the yeast. Right. And I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I saw it just leave. Did you? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> More meat adventures to come. We're going to try something different next time around. I don't know what we're going to make yet, but. Yeah, I think maybe we should just try it. Like, I don't know. I've not been super excited about anything yet. So maybe I'll be excited next year when we actually pull that stuff out of the basement and try it again. 
Um, I want to insert in here real quick a public service announcement. What were you telling me about today at lunch about the linseed oil thing? Oh. We were going to tell them. Yeah. And we didn't write it down to remember, so I'm reminding you now. All right. hope you guys are still with us. So there's a gentleman that I work with, and we have these meetings about once a week where we share safety messages with mm -hmm. each other. And this gentleman was, it was during the weekend, it was like a Saturday or a Friday or something, and they were doing some, some type of remodeling project in their home. And they were using boiled linseed oil, and they were using rags, and they were wiping down, I don't know if they were doing cabinets or what it was yeah. that they were doing. They got done with the project, took their linseed oil and their supplies down to their basement, and they have some shelves down in their basement. Just, just like us. Just like we do. <laughs> where they keep their paint and their stains and their different things you don't want to mm -hmm. keep in your garage where it's going to freeze and go bad. So threw it all on the shelf. They go to sleep, they wake up the next morning and they woke up earlier than they normally would for some reason. And they kept smelling something weird and they brushed it off to all the boiled linseed oil mm -hmm. on their cabinets or whatever it was that they were refinishing. About five minutes later, their smoke alarms all start going off. Apparently, if you take a rag and you soak it in boiled linseed oil and you set it somewhere, there's a high probability that that rag will spontaneously combust, combust yeah. sometime within the next couple of days. And Did that's what happened to him. They had to call the fire department and everything like full on fire in their basement. Just think next to all those paint cans and mineral spirits mm -hmm. and who knows what. Scared me to death to hear that story. I said, we have to tell our friends. Yeah. I don't know who all knows this. I know I definitely don't. And we've used boiled linseed oil before. I don't know where those rags are. So <laughs> I'm scared to death that we're going to we have, have a spontaneous about, combustion somewhere. Yeah. We have like two or three jars of that yeah. stuff or you know, tins. cans. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, take that to heart and I hope it sticks in the back of your brain somewhere. Anyway, I just wanted to share it with you. Public service announcement over. Yes. Dinner. I'm getting hungry. Yes. I was in the mood for some pasta today, as in some form of spaghetti. I always talk about spaghetti in my head being like the long stringy noodles. So I, we don't generally make spaghetti we noodles. We use spaghetti. some other type of pasta. So I just call it pasta. Snagged a couple pounds of ground pork from the freezer downstairs. Chopped up some onions, garlic, homemade spaghetti sauce from the pantry. All that's left is to cook the noodles and mix it all together and we're gonna eat. I'm so hungry, we're ready. I just love this man. I do, you guys need to know, and he needs to know that I know I put you through a lot of work. <laughs> When we were talking, when we were talking this morning, I, Sorry, I feel I like we've you. done, we've done about two or three years worth of work in one year. It feels like. Yeah. And I guess I take for granted that not even after being married for so long, I'm a go, go, go person. I love it. I can't do everything though. I can come up with a thousand wonderful ideas, can't I? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're good at that. <laughs> but I need him to help me implement them. And I never think for a second that maybe he doesn't want to do that. <laughs> so we're going to continue to work on our communication skills. Yes. And I'm going to purposely schedule in break time for Todd. So that's what today's about. Wrapping up early so we can get this out to you and he can have a break. Hope you enjoyed our weekend. Yes. In review. Mm -hmm. And we hope you enjoyed your weekend, whatever it is that you were doing. Yeah. Stay safe. And if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button or follow us on Instagram. We're always posting fun things over there. Mm -hmm. Or Facebook. Yep. Talk to you guys later. Bye, guys.